There are various strategies for implementing MapReduce in the task parallel library. The first is to fire off n mapping tasks that return data of type T, and then have the parent thread do a wait all one by one to reduce each of those results as the tasks finish. Recall we actually use this approach with the consumer tasks in the producer-consumer Netflix demo. For completeness, here's a quick summary of the approach. First, we have a loop that fires off the end tasks, each of which calls its map function and returns that result. The parent then waits for each of the tasks to finish, one by one, and then as those tasks finish, it calls the reduce function to process that result. Now, another common approach is to use a parallel loop combined with the notion of task local storage. This has the advantage of offloading the responsibility of data distribution to the task parallel library, since the TPL partitions the workload for us as part of the execution model for the parallel loop. Let's look at an example. Here, we see a parallel for each loop with the usual two parameters, the data source and then the lambda expression denoting how to process that particular piece of data. Now in this case, notice the lambda expression for the loop body has additional parameters. In particular, notice the variable called TLS, which stands for task local storage. This is an object reference to any kind of data you want, be it a predefined class like int or dictionary, or a custom class of your own design. The TLS provides each task with local memory for computing and collecting results. This implies the Lambda expression should now be written to map the data into this TLS object. And then notice that TLS object is then returned as the result of the computation. So where does this TLS object go after it's returned? Interestingly, it's either passed into another iteration of the loop. So you can imagine that if there's more data to process, we pass the TLS in to the next iteration, or if there are no more elements to process, the TLS object is actually passed into what's called a finalizer, where it's reduced into the final result. Notice this finalizer is a lambda expression with a TLS object as its only argument. And who creates these TLS objects? There's one more parameter in the call to parallel for each, and that's an initializer. This is a lambda expression with no parameters. Notice the empty parentheses. And its function is to return a new instance of your task local state. So that's what gets us started. So you can see here the parallel loop now has four parameters, the data source, the initializer, the body of the loop, and then the finalizer. The initializer is called exactly once to initialize the TLS for each task involved in the parallel loop. The finalizer is also called once per task just before the task exits. Now it's very important to note that the initializer and finalizer may execute concurrently and thus should be written in a thread safe manner. Okay, time for another demo. Let's revisit the Netflix application and apply the map reduce pattern. Our goal is better performance by eliminating contention for shared resources. Now recall the original solution, which used a dictionary and then looped through the file, parsing each line and updating that dictionary. What we're going to do here with MapReduce is a very similar approach. In the parallel version, we will again have a 
dictionary for collecting the result. But in this case, it will only be accessed by the main thread. So we have our parallel for each loop, which mirrors the sequential one. And then the body of the loop is essentially identical. It parses a line and updates a dictionary. The key difference from our earlier solutions is that this dictionary is a local dictionary. It's part of, or actually is entirely our task local state. So this dictionary then is created in the initializer. So notice that Lambda expression creates and returns a new instance of a dictionary. And then the last step is the finalizer. The job of the finalizer is to take that local dictionary and then merge that local dictionary into the common result dictionary. So when all iterations have finished of the parallel loop, the resulting dictionary will contain the complete results for the entire data file. Now notice, because the finalizers and initializers can run concurrently, I lock so that I have safe access to that resulting uh, dictionary. And notice this locking generates very little contention because it only happens once per task as the tasks finish. Okay, let's switch out to the desktop and give this a run in Visual Studio. So as usual, I'll drill down into exer exercise files, but I'm gonna go down into the after folder and open up Netflix parallel MapReduce. We've already seen the code, so I'm not gonna write it myself here live. I'm just gonna open up the solution and, and run it and see how she does. But just so you know, I'm not playing any tricks. Let's just do a quick look at the code. I'll just scroll down. So we see the result dictionary, the parallel for each, and then the initializer that creates the task local storage. We see the body of the loop that processes each line, putting results into the local dictionary. And then we see the finalizer, which receives that local dictionary, locks the final one, the result one, and then loops through the local one and merging the local results into the final result. All right, control F5, let's see how she does. Now remember, sequential was about 16 seconds. We had about 12 seconds for producer consumer. Ah, there we go, much better. But first, we see a correct solution. 992 for the first, 488 for the 10th, so that looks good. And now we're getting better performance we dropped from 16 down to seven seconds. So roughly what, not quite three times faster.